Is Ford about to sign a new NASCAR Cup Series team while dropping one of their existing ones in the near future? On this week's episode of Door Bumper Clear, after they got done celebrating the fact that SVG and the other foreign drivers didn't do very well, they did drop a bit of information that Ford has approached multiple teams about joining the Blue Oval family in the near future. There wasn't really a timeline given on that, and they said some of the names would surprise you. And I think the name that makes the most sense on joining them would be Colleg Racing, because right now they're the bottom tier Chevy team. And, you know, moving up and getting some factory support from Ford would go a long way for them, especially if Stuart Haas Racing ends up leaving the Ford family and going to another manufacturer, which I think is a strong likelihood in the near future, and that will lead us into another conversation in just a moment. But what are the other teams, or who are the other teams, rather, that Ford has approached? Cog makes the most sense. You can assume that they probably went out and tried to talk to Trackhouse. That's one of the hottest names in the sport right now, and getting aligned with them and all of their brand marketing would be smart for Ford, and they know that they're kind of the third Chevy team right now, and if you're going to lose one of your top two biggest Ford teams in SHR, they're right there on par with Penske, it makes a lot of sense to try to go after another team that, you know, isn't necessarily the number one or maybe not even the number two team within that manufacturer and try to promote them and be like, listen, you can be the 1A or 1B to Team Penske. That makes a ton of sense from that standpoint. And maybe they even approach 2311 Racing because Freddy Kraft did say some of the names would surprise you. And honestly, that would be a bit of a surprise considering Denny Hamlin still has not signed with Joe Gibbs Racing and 2311 has not re-upped with TRD yet, and we're already into the middle of August heading into 2024. And typically, you want these deals done, and I'm not saying it feels like a Kyle Busch situation at this point, but certainly things aren't moving at the same pace that some people would like, and you're not going to get like an NFL running back type of holdout here because there's certainly money on the table for them to go elsewhere, you know, by the sounds of it. But at the same time, if Stuart Haas Racing does leave, where did they end up going? And obviously, I think that it doesn't really seem like a secret, right? That Tony Stewart's not exactly psyched on Ford. And when they sign with Ford, everybody's like, oh, I can't believe he's leaving the GM family because he's had all of his success in NASCAR with General Motors, barring that one Talladega win uh, with TRD when he raced for Gibbs in 2008. Outside of that, though, everything else has come with General Motors. So when he moved over to Ford, you knew that Ford had just backed an absolute Brinks truck up to the doors of SHR to convince them to come over. And uh, that's not bad. Any, if anybody ever offers you a bag, you take it. Regardless if, you know, like you just have to switch manufacturers, fine, whatever. So Tony Stewart ends up switching over the team to Ford and they've had mixed results. Obviously 2020 was a banner year for Kevin Harvick. Doesn't get to race for a championship because of NASCAR's dumb playoff rules and championship race rules. But outside of that, majority of their success at Stuart Haas Racing came when they were a part of the Bowtie family, right, over at Chevrolet. So that makes a ton of sense if they want to end up moving back there. But going back to sort of their current situation with Ford, Stuart Haas Racing can't be exactly happy about the performance of the team at this point because they're getting outran by Rick Ware Racing and even BJ McLeod. And no offense to BJ McLeod or Rick Ware Racing, but a team like Stuart Haas Racing that is a number one priority or number two priority uh, at Ford should be running a hell of a lot better than they currently are. Having said all of that, Tony Stewart did have an awkward comment after the Josh Berry signing where he basically said that, like, you know, yeah, we're going to stick with Ford. That's what our contract says. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing for now. Okay. It's weird. It's a weird comment. And obviously there were some rampant rumors running around that they could be switching to Chevrolet and Dale Jr. might be a part of it and everything like that. Obviously none of that ended up being true. At the same time though, you know, Ford did also block Tony Stewart from signing Kyle Larson in 2021, Kyle Busch in 2023 as well. And if you think about it, Stuart Haas Racing's lineup for this 2023 season could be an absolute juggernaut. They could have Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Chase Briscoe under contract. Three NASCAR, well, three NASCAR Cup Series champions, assuming Kevin or Kyle Larson also wins it in 2021 if Stuart Haas Racing signs him. But three championship caliber drivers. And then Chase Briscoe, who's not a slouch necessarily in the Xfinity Series. He has a Cup Series win. Obviously, we'd like to see more out of him. That's a massive lineup, though. That's a lineup that can contend with Joe Gibbs Racing and Hendrick Motorsports. And instead, his lineup going into 2024 is going to be Chase Briscoe, Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and either Eric Almarola or Zane Smith. 
not exactly like the 27 Yankees, not exactly Murderer's Row coming in here. And this is not, that's not a lineup that can compete with Joe Gibbs Racing or Hendrick Motorsports. No offense to those guys, they just don't have the same sort of experience level that those other teams are bringing to the table right now. And for a number one team within a manufacturer, you expect the biggest names to be there, and they currently have no big names on the lineup for next year. They have some guys that have potential. Josh Berry, I think the ceiling's still high on him. Zane Smith, the ceiling's very high on him as well. Ryan Priest, I think we kind of know what you're going to get out of Ryan Priest. And Chase Briscoe, jury's still out. He at least has a cup win on speed, so there's that. But it certainly isn't a Denny Hamlin, Martin Shrex Jr., Ty Gibbs, and uh, Christopher Bell lineup. Blanked out there for a second. And it's really not... Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, William Byron, and Alex Bowman over at Hendrick Motorsports. Those are the two number one teams for the other respective manufacturers. And if Stuart Haas Racing is supposed to be that four-car number one team for Ford, they are not anywhere close when it comes to driver talent level. And now you're probably wondering, like, well, where else could he end up going? Obviously, everybody is immediately going to say, oh, he's going to bring Dodge back to NASCAR. Let me tell you this, he's not bringing Dodge back to NASCAR. Dodge is never coming back to NASCAR. The team, the manufacturer just... OEM, I should say, just famously discontinued their two most popular models in favor of EVs. They're never coming back to NASCAR, so let's just forget about that right now. Obviously, I don't think he's going to end up going to Toyota because he wasn't super psyched from what I remember of them going to Toyota back in 2008, or him at least having to drive a Toyota. He ends up buying his own team, starts up, and goes, obviously, uh, Haas was start, or part of the GM family already. Tony buying into into Haas and then aligning with Hendrick just made the most sense in the world at that time. And honestly, I think that's where he ends up back at now is being the number two Chevy team, uh, competing with Hendrick Motorsports and battling Trackhouse and RCR for that number two spot and picking up all of the Hendrick scraps that are left over from, you know, the rest of the GM factory money that goes around and all the other resources that they get. So yeah, I think that's what is going to end up happening eventually. I think Tony Stewart will find his way back to General Motors and everybody's like, oh yeah, well maybe like they want to align with, you know, other manufacturers that they do, that they, you know, have in other series. And Roger Penske, for being as conservative and as boring as he can be at times, is very smart in terms of diversifying his portfolio across a number of different motorsports. Obviously he runs Chevys and in IndyCar, Fords and NASCAR, he has Porsches, in the World Endurance or IMSA championships. So he's a guy that likes to mix things up a little bit. He also ran the Acura program for a long time as well in endurance racing. So it makes a ton of sense to have that. You don't have to have across the board everybody lined up the same. And I don't think that Stuart Haas Racing is going to convince Dodge to spend, you know, 20, 40 million dollars in development to bring whatever car that they have back to NASCAR. Obviously, could they put a V8 into one of the EV models? Sure, they could. I mean, Toyota puts a V8 into the Camry and there's never been a V8 in a Camry. But at the same time, that kind of goes against the whole brand guidelines, right? Like Dodge is all about big horsepower and it would really piss off a lot of the Dodge supporters out there if they had a NASCAR cup car that had 670 horsepower, but the street vehicle that they had only had an electric engine. Granted, still a lot of horsepower, but not exactly what they're looking for. So. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Let me know in the comments. Do you think he's going to head back to Chevy? Do you think he's going to go to Toyota? Is he going to stick with Ford? Or is Tony Stewart just going to bounce out altogether at some point? I don't know. So, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. And Instagram, Twitter, and threads at BreakHardBlog.